Backcountry Hunters and Anglers Armed Forces Initiative is one of three main programs that Backcountry Hunters and Anglers run. Within the Armed Forces program, we run three different pillars. Active duty programming, where we have a national network of installation clubs across North America. Second one is veteran programming, where we run skills camps and work projects. And the third is the legislative pillar. And what that is, is we're engaging veterans to find their voice in conservation and get them down that leadership pipeline, really honing in on like the main intersections of military and veteran members and access to our federal public land. As a veteran, I know that I had the vast majority of my healing process and my realignment to really understand who I was after service out in the wild. And spending that time out there in wilderness, I know that that was my place of solace and that was my place where I redefined myself and found my new direction. I felt lucky and I still feel lucky that I was able to go out there and experience that. I know that a lot of folks don't have the opportunity right now to go and engage in that. So a large goal with our camps is to foster that connection to the landscape. We go out there with our skills camps and we teach the tactile and the cerebral. So the tactile is getting engaged in like fostering that connection and how do we work with the land. The cerebral aspect is going to be going back to the constitution and understanding where federal lands came from, how they move forward and teaching. And so it builds in like these skill sets and these tools that veterans can put in their toolbox to further engage down the line. So we wanna get these veterans out on the landscape, teach them, empower them, and give them a new mission, and that mission's conservation. We launched our veteran programming with our inaugural veteran skills camp thanks to our presenting sponsor, Duke Cannon. We took 17 veterans out on the Eastern Montana landscape. We taught them how to hunt deer, choose the right gear and equipment for it, and all the way down to the gutless method of how to field dress an animal. We chose our location in partnership with one of our camp partners, Onyx. We had an individual veteran come out that helped us select this campsite. From the campsite itself, we could literally hike in any direction we wanted to, and as far as the eye could see, we could hunt federal public lands stacked with mule deer. Each morning, our veteran mentors would get coffee rolling, get their veterans together, and start to plan out the day's hunt. During the daytime, the veteran mentors would take the veteran hunters out into the field. We'd analyze the landscape, we'd look and see where we could get advantages for observation, where we'd set our glass, and really focus in on where we wanna hunt. And so we really honed in on that mentorship role to give them that empowerment. So like next time that they wanna go out on the field, they know exactly what to do. They've had that initial experience with a mentor right there. They can ask any questions they want real time in the moment. And then the next time they go out, they have that understanding of how to go get this done themselves. So what I expect to see is you've got all these natural benches going across the terrain and the landscape. Mm -hmm. Between that and the, like the valley bottoms is where I'm expecting to see mule deer does, just kind of like feeding and milling about. Right where you said they would be, right in the shade. <laughs> Looks like a muley doe. What other factors do you have? Um, if we, we don't want a skyline, like that's one. But that's the basis of map layers. It turns on all this information that you can see. We matched that with the cerebral aspect, and that was taking our first night and going over our foundational class of Public Lands 101. That gives that baseline education and knowledge. And from there, we moved on and started talking about how bills move into law, how it goes from the House to the Senate, all the way up to the president's desk. What does that process look like? Where can we engage within it? We talked around the campfire at night about these issues and really honed in and asking those veterans around the campfire that joined us, how do they want to get involved? What are their strong suits? What does their engagement motivation look like? And then how as we as BHA and our platform, how can we amplify that and how can we support them in their mission of conservation? Where do the authorities for public land come from? Because I think that's an argument you commonly hear is, you know, why does the government have right to own public land and why doesn't it go to the states? If those agencies aren't doing what the law says, it's, the, it's, it's their job to hold them accountable. I think just bringing even awareness to just other veteran chapters or <coughs> uh, even veteran business owners, wherever you're locally from, uh, is a huge help. With our educational components of our camps, we're really trying to sink home the message that we've gone and fought for it. It's good to know what we're fighting for now and getting involved in conservation and public land and water advocacy is that new mission, it's that new North Star. We're looking for veterans to come out who are motivated towards conservation issues, who want to understand public land and water advocacy and 
want to speak up and utilize their voice. Maybe they don't know how, maybe they have an idea of what they want to do already, but we want those veterans to come in, build this network, and start to build the next generation of conservationists with that veteran voice. Just to be able to do that is like something you can't find in a lot of places in the world. And so it's like, like Anson said, you know, you don't realize the value of it until you've left. And it's it's something to, you know, I was, I was fighting to come home to that. You've said twice today, I've heard you say, you needed this hunt. Yeah. You needed this this year. Absolutely. It's I've talked to so many veterans that don't realize it. I mean, for me, I found first military members, civilians don't understand. There's a control we need, and I found that hunting. I've had my ass kicked like that since I was still in the tree. Yeah. a long time ago, so. Yeah, because you see them and you're like, I can get there. And then you get to the shooting and you get to them and you're like, how far did we go? It was so far. <laughs> but it was totally worth it. It was awesome. Yeah, it was great. It's important to know as a veteran that you have a strong voice in the way that America is shaped. Beyond the skill camps, we're engaging with work projects. With those, we're working with state agencies. We're identifying stream, trail, or habitat projects that we can engage in. And we're looking to build that pipeline of leadership for veteran members within the public land and water advocacy. Get involved with your state chapter. From there, you're gonna understand how BHA works on that local level, what the local priority issues are, and how you can engage with them, as well as the different work projects that you can build up and utilize your leadership skill sets within the state and within those localized issues. Well, you guys wanna go for a walk? Yeah. Sweet.